Okay, we're starting the electricity to electronics unit. And first, we want to understand what is electricity. Uh, you guys learn in science class about electricity. Um, here's a photo. We have electricity coming from the sky. Basically, it is the flow of electrons. We want to make like when when electrons move, it creates electricity. Okay, so what is electricity? It is the flow or the movement of electrons based on gaining or losing electrons. So when the atom loses electrons, it becomes positively charged, and when it gains it or has too much that they have to get rid of, it becomes negatively charged. Okay, so um, that's the basis of electricity. If you rub your feet on the ground, you pick it up some static. That is, you're gaining the amount of electrons, and then when you touch something, you discharge the electrons that is in your body to something else. Therefore, there's a big difference of electrons from one item to the other, so that creates what we call electricity. Okay, so it, again, it is the movement. When you excite the atoms or excite the electrons, that's what we call electricity. Here's a diagram of it. You have your electrons on the outer uh, rings and you have your protons and neutrons. Protons are positive charge, neutrons are neutral, and then your electrons are the negative charges on the outside. And when we lose or gain those is when we create electricity. Now here's the basics of two types of electric or three types of electricity. We have static that's when we can go around shocking people. Most of you remember probably rubbing your feet on carpet and then going over and trying to zap somebody. That's what we call static electricity or the buildup of electricity. Direct current is when the, the electricity goes one direction. It's in one single flow. And that's what you guys are building right now. You're building your Morse code machines using the battery. That goes from uh, positive to negative. The electricity flows in that direction. Okay. Now on AC current, which is alternating current, and it's not, if you look at it, AC-DC, you've heard this before, it's a band, but it came from the initials AC-DC, which is direct current and alternating current. Alternating current, it actually, the, the current goes back and forth. Okay. It doesn't just go one direction. It goes back and forth. Um, why the difference? I mean, why use DC over AC or AC over DC? Uh, they both do the same thing, but there's some point in time that, that the alternating current is more feasible to use in machines and, and so on. So there is, there is some benefits to one or the other, but um, they're both going to do the same thing, power up your source of what you're using. Okay, I want to kind of demonstrate this using a garden hose. Some of you guys have been through a garden hose, you put your thumb on the top of it, and when you put your thumb on the top, it increases the flow. Okay, same with electricity. If we put something to hold, uh, slow it down some way, for example, if we had just imagine your hand over the hose, it will create more, the, the, the path of travel is going to go faster. Okay, so if we shrink down, if you look at that little pipe, we shrink down that wire, it's causing it to mm -hmm. flow a lot faster. Therefore, if we open it up, it's going to go slower. Um, but, so kind of understand that it is similar to the water and your thumb over the top of it. Okay, so we got to measure it, and we measure it with volts, amps, and resistance. Volt, sometimes it's the letter is E, sometimes it's V. Okay, so you'll see it both ways. I got a video I want you to watch um, after this video that will explain Ohm's Law a little better. But voltage is the pressure that pushes against, uh, pushes electricity into the circuit. Okay, so the volts, if you think about it, your batteries that you are using for your Morse code machine are 1.5 volts. That's how much pressure of electricity is going to go through that circuit. Okay. The amperage is the flow. 
Okay. How fast is it going? Think about your thumb over the, the hose. If you put a lot of um, put a lot of resistance on it, which means your thumb, it's going to flow a lot faster. So your amperage is going to change based on how much resistance you put in into your circuit. And then the resistance is anything that is going to slow the current mm. down or uh, slow the, the volts down. Okay, so we, there's three things that we're going to, to measure when we do this. Okay, this is how you use math involved. Ohm's law is how we figure it up. It's very simple. Draw a circle. You can put at the very top E. Again, it can be V. It's, I've seen it both ways. V is a lot easier for kids to understand. Mm -hmm. E is up there as well. But uh, E equals voltage. I is ampered, amperes or amperage. Some people call it amps. And then R is resistance. Okay. E equals I times R. So if you have two of them, you can find a third one. Okay. If you, have, if you need to find I, it is E divided by R. So voltage divided by resistance will give you your amps. Therefore, if you need to find resistance and you have volts and amps, you should be able to mathematically figure it out. And this diagram shows really well how to do that mathematically. So kind of draw this diagram. We're going to use it in this the next video and you'll be able to see how it works. Pretty simple mental math. Okay, what does electronic meter do or electric meter do? You guys have these outside your home. If you think about it, it's going to measure how much you're using. If you use it, you got to pay for it. If you go on a hot summer day, go outside and look at your meter. That thing's spinning nonstop because you're using a lot of electricity for air conditioning. Okay, so when you use your washer and dryer, go outside, look at your meter and check out how fast it's spinning. Somebody's going to pay for it, and what it is, your electric meter will tell how much you used, and then you'll have to pay for that amount used. Okay, how do we control it? Okay, we have conductors. We have insulators. These are the main things that we're going to use to control the amount of electricity we use. Conductors, typically they have, they're made up of metal. Okay, a lot of metals are good conductors. The best conductor is gold. We don't use gold because it's too expensive. Most homes we use copper. Okay, copper has a weak hold of the electrons, so we're going to get rid of the electrons very easily with them. For an insulator, they have a tight grip on them, so they're not going to bounce electrons back and forth. So we do this, we put an insulator around a conductor, and then we can control the amount and what goes through it, the amount of electricity flowing through it, because we can make our electrons move back and forth in our conductor. That creates electricity, as we learned in the first slide. Then we can grab onto our insulator, and we're going to be, for the most part, safe, because uh, it's not going to go through, because it's holding on electrons and keeping us from gaining any. That's how we can control the flow is by combining those two together. Now semiconductors and superconductors, uh, very neat materials. Semiconductors can be either a conductor or an insulator. Okay, silicon is a, is a type of material that if we put electricity to it, it can act as a conductor or it acts as a switch to turn things on. And it can also, as standalone, it can be an insulator. So it blocks the flow of electricity. There's, it's a very neat material that can act as either or, depends on how we use it. Okay, and then superconductor has no resistance to electricity. Okay, that, that means it is a material that absolutely has nothing that slows down the flow. Okay, it's a great conductor. We call those superconductors. Okay, first thing we got to know to have a, a circuit, we've talked about this in class, 
you've got to have a power source, a load, and a switch. Here's an example we are doing um, in class. We are going through a, a simple circuit that goes one direction. You have your load, you have your, which is in this case the lamps, we have the battery which is your power source, and we have an on off switch which controls it to stop or start. Okay, an electronic device, We've, we're starting to see a lot of these. An electronic device can consist of a lot of things. Your phones, um, you did robotics, or you, you, you will be doing robotics. But robotics is basically transmit electrical energy into a signal transmitted to a receiver. Okay, if you look at this picture, the guy's controlling a robot through a basically a control device which sends signals to your robot and they, they talk back and forth using electrical signals. Okay. The way that last picture was is through the air. We send electromagnetic waves from the machine to the controller to control it. We could use wires or lasers. Okay. A, lot of, a lot of times we use lasers through fiber optic cables and that's how we can send signals. Um, very expensive, cost a lot, um, but it's very effective. Through the air is really well. There's really good good way to do it, but you can only go so far. Okay, after so far, you start losing signal, and then we end up not having any uh, electric flow going through the waves. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of one of the neat ones that how small can a cell phone be made? It's getting more and more. Um, we're we're getting smaller and smaller as we as we speak. Okay. We keep making up little microchips and integrated circuits. And this is a picture. It's a, it's a fairly old slide with this photo, but that's an ant holding the microchip. It's they're getting smaller thanks to nanotechnology. Nanotechnology is creating things super small. Okay, they have been building uh, for years now uh, wires that are two atoms tall by eight atoms wide. You physically can't see that. We are making those type of wires so we can make our microchips smaller and smaller and smaller. So when we get small microchips, our devices are going to get smaller and they're going to get more powerful. Okay, so it's going to be a unique, um, your next 10 years or even your high school career, you're going to see a lot of things changing. The way we look at things, the how small they're getting, how much more memory and power they're getting just because of the way uh, these integrated circuits are working, uh, the way microchipping is going, and uh, how small everything's going because of nanotechnology. Have a great day.